So you got yourself a 67 Mopar A-Body. Your fuel gauge and temp sensors don't work, but your ammeter does. We're gonna talk about the why and what you can do to fix it. This video is a direct response to one of the comments in our fuel gauge troubleshooting part two video, where viewer Joe Fall is having exactly this problem. Now I hope to quickly cover exactly how I would troubleshoot this. This is after all directly related to what I do for a living. Welcome to my editing room, where I've got the tools to help us better understand exactly what's going on here. One of the main reasons why your ammeter will work yet your fuel gauge and temperature gauge will not, is simply because they run on different circuits. Both your fuel gauge and your temperature gauge get their external power from this external voltage limiter. Since that's our common denominator, that's where we're gonna start. We get a 12 volt signal in here at G1, which runs to the center pin here on the voltage limiter. That's gonna be important later. The output of our voltage limiter is your pulsing five volts. Now mine fluctuates anywhere from zero to nine volts and it works just fine. You shouldn't have to worry about it. We're gonna go ahead and start here at G1 where our 12 volts comes into the PCB. Back to the garage. Now figuring out if we've got 12 volts come into the PCB is actually pretty simple. This connector right here, which plugs into the back of your instrument cluster right behind the temperature gauge. And this black wire right here is where our 12 volts comes in. So just take the red lead of your multimeter, put it inside the connector, take your black lead to a good ground, turn on the key to your car, and you should have 12 volts. So if you got no 12 volts on this black wire, then your problem is somewhere else in the system and you're gonna have to trace it back. Now, if you've got 12 volts there, you should also have 12 volts here. This is the corresponding pin to that connector. Now this pin runs to the center pin in your voltage limiter. The voltage limiter out, you can see we've got three slots, each corresponding to a blade on the limiter. You wanna make sure these slots are nice and clean. You can do that with a bit of 2000 grit sandpaper. Just run it in there, just like as you were cleaning the points on a distributor. It doesn't take a whole lot and they shine up nice and bright. Once you're sure those contacts are clean, we can check the input to our voltage limiter. Go ahead and plug it back in. And again, we're gonna take our red lead from our multimeter and then you can run it right up in there. Check that with your black lead on the ground. You should also see 12 volts. If you've got good 12 volts there, now it's time to check for your pulsing five volts on the output of the limiter. Slide from this center blade here, just to this outside blade and see what you got. If you've got your pulsing five volts, then your voltage limiter is good and we need to look elsewhere. So if we have pulsing five volts on our blade here, now we need to check this stud, which is the back of our fuel gauge, and this stud, which is the back of our temperature gauge. This is where our five volts goes into both of those. If you, you should just be able to touch this stud. If you don't have anything here, then we need to look at cleaning those connections. Popping these nuts off is a pretty simple affair if you are actually turning the wrench the right way. Once those are off, run them lightly over sandpaper. Again, go with the 2000 grit. Doesn't, you want it as minimally abrasive as possible. You want to go ahead and clean up your copper pads. As those copper pads are really thin, I highly discourage sandpaper here. A pencil eraser will do the job just fine. Last but not least, Go ahead and give those studs a little wire brush love. Make sure they are nice and clean as well. I'm using a brass brush here. So go ahead and throw it all back together and check again for your pulsing five volts. Unfortunately, if you still don't have it here, problems in your PCB, which probably need to be replaced, or it's further down the line with your temperature sensor or your fuel sending unit. Temperature sensor is pretty self-explanatory. Probably just have to place that. You want to see how to troubleshoot your fuel sending unit check out this video right here 